We got Johnny Case back here on the program. He's going to be making his PFL debut this Thursday against Jason High. Johnny, what's going on, man? How you doing? Doing good, man. Uh, just, uh, you know, finishing up a nice little haircut, looking fresh. Yes, absolutely. Looking good ahead of your uh, big debut. And, uh, you know, congrats on getting this opportunity. How did this all come together? Because I just found out about this like last week and I see you're fighting on Thursday. Yeah, so it works out. My girlfriend, uh, Emily Whitmire, she trains at Extreme Couture where um, Ray Cepho trains, actually. Ray Cepho is the, the president of the PFL. And uh, they had a guy injured, um, couldn't pass his medicals, uh, and needed a guy ready to go last minute. And I was I was ready and uh, I'm here for the job, you know? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great opportunity. And we'll talk about the fight in a sec, but there's so much to talk about with you uh, since uh, we last saw you. Uh, you know, on a big stage, of course, that was with the UFC. And uh, two losses and they released you. Were you surprised by that? Because I think a lot of people were, it felt like the UFC kind of gave up on you a little bit early. Yeah, you know, I was I was very surprised with it, especially because the two guys I lost to, you know, the, the one with Matthews, it was a fight of the night, and it was a fight that I was winning. And I got caught, in, you know, late in that, in that fight with the submission. Um, and that guy actually, and, and with Tony Martin, again, that was another close fight and, uh, ended up going down to that takedown at the end of the third round. And, uh, you know, and both of those guys have both since then moved up a weight class at welterweight. Matthews is on a three fight win streak. Uh, you know, and Martin's on a two fight win streak. I kind of felt, you know, mm -hmm. I felt it was a little unjustified to be cut, mm -hmm. but you know, at the end of the day, it is what it is. And, uh. Yeah, you know, I've grown from it being released. You know, I was obviously a little bitter about it at first. You know, I felt it was kind of unjust, unwarranted. But at the end of the day, it's made me a better person. It's made me more hungry, more humble. And, and I'm just so excited the PFL is giving me the opportunity to uh, to finally display on, a, on the big stage again all the hard work I've been, I've, I've been doing. The other big news, of course, you signed with Danny Rube, Ruby Sports and Entertainment, one of the best managers in the game. How did that come together? Because Danny, uh, you know, he, he gets big name fights for his clients. Yeah, dude. Uh, so it worked out really well, actually. So, um, you know, it turns out that was actually one, one of the issue was my, my previous management turned out to be an issue why I was released. And, uh, you know, Danny, he helps a lot of the guys at the lab. Uh, he has a lot, all of the guys at the lab and they all love him. And he's got a great relationship with not just the UFC, but uh, a lot of a lot of guys. And, uh, you know, obviously the PFL, Ryzen, you know, all, all the best organizations he's, he's got the, uh, the ins and outs with. So it was kind of an easy decision. Yeah, no, that, that's great. Um, and, of course, you're taking on Jason High, a fellow UFC vet. How do you feel like you match up against him in this fight? I match up really well against this guy. You know, he's 5'9", he's, he's a shorter fighter, southpaw, um, real muscular kind of build. So I think, honestly, it's going to be great for me, a longer, lengthy, faster guy. Uh, you know, I use the range really well. And um, I feel like he gasses a lot. You know, he tried, he's really heavy on the wrestling, and he's a muscly guy. So I feel like he's going to get tired, and that's where I'm really going to shine and, take, and you know, take away the fight. Was he someone that was on your radar even before this all happened? Because he was in the UFC around the same time you were. I imagine he was someone you were probably looking at as a potential opponent. Actually, so I knew Jason way from way back in the day, way back in the regional from Iowa. He actually fought and was champion for uh, Midwest Cage Championship who I was the champion for, and later I ended up buying the company and uh, am, the, am the owner of that company now. So I've known of Jason since I started fighting. So, uh, you know, I didn't know if he was going to be on my radar or not, but I knew that pot potentially it could happen at some point if he was going to be in the UFC and I was going to be in the UFC. But, um, yeah, I mean, here, here we are, and uh, I couldn't be more excited about this matchup. And, of course, now you're training at the lab. And the last time we were talking, you weren't training there. I think uh, you were training at another camp. Uh, how did this come together, working at, uh, you know, working with some great fighters at the lab? So I originally started out my the, – the first real gym I was at was Alliance MMA in San Diego. And um, I was there as a, just a powerhouse of who's who and ended up leaving there. It was a bunch of us left there, you know, as a collective, uh, you know, kind of – we just wanted a fresh start, you know, new coaching. And then we found Power MMA – with uh, Ryan Bader, Simpson, C.B. Dalloway, all those guys. And, uh, again, it was a great relationship. I'm grateful for everything that happened there. But uh, all the little guys, my weight class, ended up moving away. You know, one guy got, got uh, his wife pregnant and they moved back home. One guy, um, you know, one guy moved back to San Diego. One guy met a girlfriend. So it's just whatever reason, we all ended up moving away. And, uh, um and then I was living in Arizona at the time, and the MMA lab it came up. And I've known about the MMA lab, uh, you know, basically my whole career. And it was a place that I really was interested in. Obviously, former world champion Benson Henderson was there. And uh, so I decided to check it out. And 
honestly, you know, that um, I'm a little upset that I uh, that that I didn't go there sooner. And it's just a great camp. One of the things I hear about the lab with a lot of them is it's like a family there. It's really uh, there's there's big sort of like a group uh, you know thing uh, going on there as far as everyone having each other's backs. Do you find that as well that it's just different than some of the other camps you've been a part of? Absolutely. Yeah, family is exactly it, man. There's just everybody cares and everybody everybody there is there to build you up. And you know, I go to other camps and stuff, and it's like everybody's there for themselves. Like I mean, they don't really care if they they hurt you. They don't care, you know anything like that, but it's not like that at all at the MMA lab. You know, it's a brotherhood. It's They're my brothers and sisters. They're not just my teammates. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I imagine training partners, you know, uh, guys like Dracar Close, um, you know, just, just the, the sort of the who's who as far as, you know, main guy. I know there's a lot of people at the, at the lab, but is there anyone you work with a little bit more than others? Uh, Benson. Benson is usually, the, he's my main sparring partner. Um, I don't really like to wrestle with him, though, to be honest. Uh, he kicks my ass. He beats me up more in a wrestling match than, than he ever does sparring. He's just a, a real powerhouse rest, type of wrestler. Um, but, yeah, Dracar is really good there. You know, T- Tim Welch is another good training partner. Uh, just just at, really anybody. There's really not a bad guy in that room, you know. I, I, mix, I try to mix it up with everybody. But when it's time for my camps, I usually get in there with, uh, with uh, Mike Hamill or, or Benson Henderson. Excellent. And how about the weight cut? How's that going? It's fights on Thursday. Imagine everything on point. Everything's on point. Yeah. So I actually just fought July 28th in Phoenix. That was a 36 second knockout. And uh, I kind of had a feeling that I was going to get picked for a last minute replacement. Something quick was going to come up short notice. So I kept my weight down and just got right back to the gym. You know, I didn't have any injuries or anything. So my weight is actually good. I actually dropped down a little too low last week. I was, you know, trying to taper it down thinking like it was a normal weight cut, you know, and uh, I think my body's still pretty, you know, in, in good shape and burning off quick. So I dropped down a little lower than I wanted to be. So I had to had to eat a little more and get my weight back to right where I'm at. So I've only got like like 17 pounds, 18 pounds right now. So that's perfect, perfect range right now. Who's going to be in your corner for this fight? Uh, it's going to be John Crouch, uh, Eddie Chaw, who's my striking coach. And uh, another teammate, Dan, the Hitman Moret. Oh, of course, uh, yeah. Can't forget the Hitman, former uh, RFA standout now in the UFC uh, lightweight division. Yeah, exactly. So he's actually my roommate back in Phoenix. So me and him just were kind of anywhere we go. I I, I was in his corner for his UFC debut, and he's been in my corner my last three fights, actually. So it's been – he he was there my last UFC fight in Oklahoma City. Uh, And then I turned around and and cornered him in the RFA fight the very next week in Oklahoma. And – you know, so it's been good. He's, he's a good cornerman. He's a good teammate, and we're both lightweight. We both fight at the lightweight division. So, how do you see this fight playing out on Thursday? Um, I see it turning out like just me getting my hand raised. You know, knockout, submission, decision. I think uh, my will, my heart. You know, what I mean, like I, I've been kind of missing some pieces. Uh, you know, throughout the years. You know, being away from my kids is really hard, and. Um, you know, just being by myself, it felt at times it just felt like I was by myself, you know. And now, I, you know, I met the love of my life. Um, things are going great with my my kids, and I feel like my heart is is the the fullest it's ever been, you know. And a, and a full heart makes for a dangerous fighter. And I feel like there's there's the limit that I'm willing to go is as far exceeds anybody that's going to stand across from me. So I feel like my will. I've been working hard. My mind's so focused. I'm happy. And I feel like I'm just going to get in there and I'm going to shine. Is this, I, I was talking to Jason. It sounds like the winner of this fight will get a spot in the playoffs. Is that what you've heard? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So the winner of this fight, I mean, this is, you know, everything. I think the guys that are already in the tournament, they've had to fight two fights, I think, just to get in. And so for me to just be able to sneak in the back door right here, it feels like I'm kind of, you know, it feels like, you know, people, those guys that have had to fight to earn their spot are going to be looking at me kind of sideways, you know, when I when I get this fight and I get in the tournament. But I'm just so, so grateful that, uh, you know, this opportunity is basically falling on my lap and, and, and I'm not going to squander it all and I'm going to take it for what it's worth and, and I'm going to I'm going to give it my all. If you won the million dollars and this once this whole thing's over, you know, playoffs and all that, what would you do with the money? I, I'm sure you that's crossed your mind being a part of PFL now. Man, I'm gonna buy a business. I'm gonna start up a business uh, and just and, and and buy a house and just and continue fighting and continue, continuing doing what I love and you know hopefully would just never have to worry about the financial struggle about it. You know this this past year has been really humbling. 
you know, like I go from making, you know, I had two bonuses in the UFC, which was awesome. I ended up buying an MMA promotion, um, you know, spent, so I invested it really well, but, uh, you know, not being in the UFC and taking a year off and I wasn't able to find fights because nobody would even want to fight me. If I did find fights, it'd be for like, you know, pennies on the dollar from what I used to getting paid, way underpaid. So the, the financial struggle has been really, really humbling this year. So I think honestly just you know, keep investing in and keep, keep it, uh, keep that money coming in when I'm not able to get fights, when I'm retired and I'm, I'm no longer able to do this anymore. So I think that's just the, you know, I'm going to use it to, to make more money. I like it. Uh, before I let you go, I got to ask just cause you brought her up a couple times in this interview. Uh, Emily Whitmar, what's the story? How did you guys end up together? Cause you're in Arizona. She's in Vegas at extreme. Well, what's the, what's the story there? Crazy story. Okay. So, uh, I like telling this one actually. So it was actually the UFC in Glendale. My roommate, Dan Moret made his debut. He got knocked out by Gilbert Burns. Tough fight. Ended up getting knocked out. We And uh, we had this after party at some bar there that we had set up already. And we weren't even going to go, you know, because he got knocked out. And he was like, ah. But then he's like, oh, I got family in town. We're going to go. We're going to go to this. So we're at the bar. And um, my other teammate, Lauren Murphy, was on The Ultimate Fighter, the Gaethje versus Alvarez that was on that one, and her and Emily were on that season together. Well, Emily was in town with her, and um, I remember I was just hanging out, whatever, and, and Lauren was like, hey, Johnny, come here. Uh, and I was like, hey, you know, what are, whenever there, she's like, hey, Johnny, this is my friend Emily. And I remember just looking at her, and it was like, like the lights were shining down on her. She was like glowing like an angel. And I just remember like just instantly falling in love with her. And we talked and hit it off, and... Um, you know, and I, I was I drove to Vegas the next weekend, and you know, been pretty much inseparable ever since. How often do you go up to Vegas, and how long is that drive? I'm kind of unfamiliar with that. Is it, is it a long drive to get out there? Uh, it's like a four and a half hour drive. Wow, look at you making making the trip. I mean, that that's not a, that's not an easy drive. No, no. So it's it's been awesome. So basically, ever since we met that weekend in Phoenix, she's either been in. Yeah, she's either she's either come down to Phoenix or I come to Vegas. So and it's been really awesome too for our gyms. Our gyms are really uh, are really are really close and they get along as well. So they both the coaches, my coaches and her coach, both respect each other, and um, couldn't couldn't be couldn't be a better better match, man. It, it works out really well. So yeah, so basically I, we we've been inseparable ever since we met. So she's in Phoenix with me, or I'm here in Vegas with her. Very cool. Uh, is it easier dating a fighter just because you guys know what it's like to go through fight camp and you know have have the stress of cutting weight and all that other stuff? I th- I think so. I j- and I, but to be honest, man, like I've wrestled my whole life. My brothers fight. I've had close friends that fight. Never been nervous. Never nothing. And her UFC debut was my first experience with her fighting at all. And man, I was losing my shit. <laughs> like I've never been so nervous for somebody's fight in my entire life. So there's been some, uh, some new experiences, but yeah, I mean, to be honest, like it's been a match made in heaven. She, she totally gets it. She's cool as hell. And you know, it's nice to have, have someone to share something that I'm so passionate about as well that she is as well, you know? So it's been awesome. Last question before we let you go, you watching any TV right now, any Netflix, playing any video games, anything getting you through camp to kind of take your mind off things? Nothing, man. No, I don't, I'm not really huge into that. Like, uh, you know, I'll, watch a movie here and there just kind of pass the time but mostly not just training and hanging out with her and just living life and loving it man that's about it that's all i do train train train. well we're looking forward to this fight it's coming up here this thursday it's pfl7 johnny it was great getting a chance to catch up with you man glad to hear everything's going so well just uh, remind people where they can find you on social media and if you have any sponsors or shout outs the floor is yours Hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at Hollywood Case and follow me on Facebook at Johnny Hollywood Case. Um, yeah, just thanks for the interview. Thanks for the time, James. It's great talking to you again. You guys can watch the fight. Uh, follow PFL on Facebook, and uh, I'll be the fourth fight of the night streaming next Thursday. So watch that. When I win that fight, I'll be in the tournament. So hopefully uh, we'll be catching that million-dollar check. What's up, fight fans? If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to see even more interviews with your favorite UFC and Bellator fighters. We've also got coverage at events, including post-fight press conferences and media scrums. And if you like this video, check out the video to my right. It's worth your time.